This commander is insane. It made us do something we've never even done before. So let's check it out. Voja, Jaws of the Conclave, is a crazy 5-5 legendary creature wolf for two, a red, a green, and a white, and he has Vigilance, Trample, and Ward 3. Then, whenever it attacks, put X plus one plus one counters on each creature you control, where X is the number of elves you control, and then draw a card for each wolf you control. So Voja has sparked a lot of controversy within the magic community over the last month or so since its release in Murders of Karlov Manor. I know, we're a little bit late to the party. Of course you're late! <laughs> However, stick with me. This is crazy. We looked at Voja. We saw how powerful it was. We played a couple of games against it. We saw what the decks did. It was bananas. In addition to the conversations that were had around this card, we decided to go ahead and try to give a little bit of statistics and a little bit of proof into why it's so crazy powerful. Interesting. Show your work. So we built this deck four, five different ways. Both ends of the budget spectrum. Super cheap at like 35 bucks, all the way up to like a $5,000 deck. We built it with elf and wolf synergy. We built it with fewer creatures and more instants and sorceries and protection for Voja. And we built it with more of the card draw strategy. Turns out, no matter how you build it, it's crazy. The power doesn't come from the 99. The power in this commander deck comes from Voja. You want him in the game as quickly and as often as possible. Now, Voja is susceptible to several different strategies. One, he is not a CEDH commander. He is extremely, extremely powerful, but not in a CEDH kind of way that would be able to get you a turn two, turn three, turn four win. It's just not that fast. You still have set up to get this commander ready to go. You know, a turn one soul ring with a jeweled lotus to be able to cast Voja does this essentially nothing. He needs other creatures out on your board to really be able to maximize his potential. The kinds of things Voja are susceptible to would be control decks, which would keep you from being able to build the board state around him that he really needs to shine. Another one would be something like Shielder that punishes you for drawing cards as Voja wants to draw lots and lots of cards. Another one is just board wipes, blanket removal, all those kinds of board wipes that, that get around that ward card. Cost. That being said, he's just as susceptible to being spot removed as long as your opponents are willing to pay that ward cost. And without Voja, the deck really can stall out. Potentially could need a few backup game plans in order to get the W. Well, that being said, we're going to give a deck tech with Voja today, and this is just going to be the build we thought was the most reasonable budget-wise and just kind of the most fun overall. Again, it's super powerful. Let's get into this deck. First up with creatures, we have have a few types of different creatures in this deck. Again, Voja is a wolf and he wants to interact with other wolves and with elves. Both of those criteria need to be met for him to really reach his max potential. So we have exactly that. We have a bunch of wolves and we have a bunch of elves and then we have a few shapeshifters that qualify as both as they have changeling in their keywords. So first we have Anara Wolved Familiar. It's a 4-4 wolf for three and a green. And it says, as long as it's your turn, commanders you control have indestructible. So that's good. On your turn, he cannot be destroyed. But mostly with this card, we just need it to say wolf in the subtype. Next, we have Armorcraft Judge. It is an elf artificer for three and a green. It is a 3-3, three, three, and it says whenever Armorcraft Judge enters the battlefield, draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. This can draw you a whole bunch of cards as Voja gives plus one, plus one counters to all creatures on your board. Next, we have Arwen, Weaver of Hope. She is one green green for a 2-1 elf noble and says each other creature enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it equal to the amount of Arwen, Weaver of Hope's toughness. So she comes in as a 2-1. So anything that gets played after her gets at least a single plus one plus one counter. But after a turn with Voja, he could put three or four or ten counters on Arwen and then each creature coming in after that 
would receive that many plus one plus one counters so that can get out of hand really quickly next we have ascendant pack leader it is a single green for a two one wolf it says it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it if you control a permanent with mana value four or greater and then whenever you cast a spell with mana value four or greater you put another plus one plus one counter on ascendant pack leader so this thing will grow over time as you're casting your spells next we have our first changeling this is avian changeling it is two and a white for a changeling with flying and it is a 2-2. The nice thing about those changelings is they are all creature types at all times. So when you go to resolve Voja's attack trigger, it will see it as an elf and put another counter, but it will also see it as a wolf and draw a card. So changelings in this deck are very good. Next we have Beast Whisperer for two and two green and it's a 2-3 elf druid. And it says when you cast a creature spell, draw a card. This is a great card draw card. It is honestly great in every deck that is creature heavy that allows it. Next, we have Bloodbraid Elf. It is two, a red, and a green for an elf berserker, and it has haste and it has cascade. Cascade means you look at the top of your library until you find a card that is mana cost less than Bloodbraid Elf, so three or less, and it just cannot be a land. So whatever you turn over next that meets those criteria, you can play that without paying its mana costs. Next we have Bramblewood Paragon. This one is a definite gem in this deck. It is one in a green for a 2-2 Elf, and it says each other warrior creature you control comes into play with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. So the changelings will also fall into that category as they are all creature types so they will qualify for that warrior but the best part about this card is each creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it has trample so even without Voja being out there if you have a board state and he was spot removed and you still have some big creatures they will have trampled this way and that way you can go ahead and get through for tons of damage next we have cemetery prowler it is one and two green for a three four wolf with Vigilance, it says when it enters the battlefield, exile a card from a graveyard. Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card type they share with cards exiled with Cemetery Prowler. So some cost reduction potentially provided that you exile a creature. Next we have Druid of Anima. This is an elf druid. It is one in a green for a 1-1 one, one that taps for red, green, or white. So it is a mana dork that taps for each of the colors we need for this deck, so that's really nice. Next we have Elvish Visionary. It is one in a green for a 1-1, one, one. and when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Card draw is always underrated. Next we have Ferocious Pup. It is two in a green for a 0-1 wolf, but when it enters, it makes a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. So it brings itself on, which is a 0-1. However, it won't stay a 0-1 very long with Voja. So good card in this. Next we have Fire Belly Changeling. It is one in a red for a changeling. And it is a 1-1 one, one, and it says pay a red and then Fire Belly Changeling gets plus one plus until the end of turn. You can only activate this ability twice each turn. So you can pump it up to make it a 3-1 once per turn. Next we have Findhorn Elves. It is one green for a 1-1 one, one that taps for green. Good mana dork. Then we have Game Trail Changeling. This is three green green for a 4-4 four, four changeling that has trample. Next we have Grand Warlord Rada, which is two red and a green and it has haste and says whenever one or more creatures you control attack, add that much mana in any combination of red and green until end of turn you don't lose that mana as steps and phases end so that's a very good way to ramp into your second main phase next we have hollow hinge overlord it is four green green for a four four wolf it has flash and at the beginning of your upkeep for each creature you control that's a wolf or a werewolf create a two two green wolf creature token so you want to flash this card in right before your next turn creating a whole bunch of wolf tokens. That way they don't have summoning sickness on that next turn, and then you can swing out with them. Next we have Immerwolf. It is a 2-2 wolf for one, a red and a green, and it has Intimidate, and that says, creature cannot be blocked except by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So only artifact creatures, red creatures, and green creatures. And then it says non-human werewolves you control can't transform. We don't really care much about that second part. 
Next, we have Irregular Cohort. It is 2 1 2 and 2 white for a 2 2 changeling. And it says whenever it enters the battlefield, create a 2 2 colorless shapeshifter creature token with changeling. So it essentially brings another 2 2 changeling that will count as elves and as wolves. So a great card in this deck. Next, we have Lanor Elves. It is another mana dork for a single green and it taps for a green. Next, we have Lisa Alana Huntmaster. It is two green green, and it says whenever you cast an elf spell, you may put a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token onto the battlefield. So again, those changelings will meet that criteria as well, so you can make more elves. Then each one of those elves will see each other when Voja attacks, and you'll get more and more counters. Next, we have Marwyn the Nurturer. This is a really good mana dork in this deck. It is two and a green for a 1-1, one, one, and... It says whenever another elf enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on Marwyn the Nurturer. And then you can tap it and add green equal to Marwyn's power. Again, she's going to see every elf enter the battlefield. It doesn't have to be a cast. It can be those elf tokens. It can be those changeling tokens. But she's going to tap for green equal to the amount of her power. And with Voja adding counters to her turn after turn, that can get out of hand very, very quickly. Next, we have Masked Vandal. It is one in a green for a 1-3 changeling. It says when it enters a battlefield, you may exile a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, exile target artifact or enchantment that an opponent controls. So again, it checks the boxes for elf and wolf, plus we have removal stapled to it, so that's really good. Next, we have Master of the Wild Hunt. It is two green green for a human shaman, and it says at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 2-2 green wolf creature token. So this is one of the very few creatures that we have in this deck that is not either a shapeshifter, an elf, or a wolf. The reason we have it is because it creates wolves every turn. Then you can tap Master of the Wild Hunt and tap all untapped wolf creatures you control. Each wolf tapped this way deals combat damage equal to its power to target creature. That creature deals damage equal to its power divided as its controller chooses among any number of those wolves. So a little bit of a double-edged sword potentially because the player you choose can choose to divvy up that damage against however many wolves you control. But typically those wolves are going to be huge from Voja pumping them up. So you could potentially, you could swing just Voja, have six wolves, buff them up huge with your elves, and then in the second main phase, you could make them all deal damage to somebody else's things, kind of however you want to do it. You could do that before. Before you go to combat, you could have all those wolves do that, and then remove all of your opponent's blockers, and then you would have a cleared path to swing in. Next, we have Priest of Titania, one in a green. It is a 1-1, one, one, and it says tap, add green for each elf on the battlefield. This can also get out of hand very quickly. Next, we have Pyreheart Wolf. It is two and a red for a 1-1 one, one wolf, and it says whenever it attacks, each creature you control can't be blocked this turn except by two or more creatures. That essentially gives all of your board menace. And then it also has Undying. When this creature dies, if it had no plus one, plus one counters on it, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. That's probably not going to happen in this deck. However, it's still very good and it's still a wolf. Next we have Reclamation Sage. It is two and a green for a 2-1 elf and it says when it enters a battlefield you may destroy a target artifact or enchantment. Now we could have gone with a instant or sorcery and that would be removal for three but if you can put it on an elf body instead let's do that considering what Voja wants to do. Next we have Roaming Throne. It is four colorless it has Ward 2, and it says when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Roaming Throne is the chosen type in addition to its other types. If a triggered ability of another creature you control of the chosen type triggers, it triggers an additional time. So with Roaming Throne in this deck, you're going to want to choose Wolf. That way he will double Voja's attack triggers. That is insane. Next we have Runebound Wolf. It is one and a red for a 2-2 wolf, and it says pay three and a red. You can tap it, and Runebound Wolf deals damage equal to the number of wolves and werewolves you control to target opponent. That potentially could take someone right out of the game. Next we have Shalai and Halar. This is a 3-3 angel elf, and it costs one, a red, a green, and a white, and it says flying and vigilance. Whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are put on a creature you control, 
Shalai and Halar deals that much damage to target opponent. That might also be enough to kill a player. Next we have Tarion Mauler. It is two and a red for a shapeshifter with changeling. It is a 2-2 and it says whenever an opponent plays a spell, you may put a plus one plus one counter on Tarion Mauler. So it's going to grow exponentially and get massive. Next up we have a very cool couple of creatures. They are all Tulsimir, who is an elf and best friends with the original Voja, the one that they created this card after. So the three versions of Tulsimir are Tulsimir Wolfblood. It is four one for a green and a white, and it gives other green creatures you control plus one, plus one, and it gives other white creatures you control plus one, plus one, and then you can tap it to create a legendary 2-2 two, two green and white wolf creature token that is named Voja. The next Tulsimir is Friend to Wolves. It is two, two green and a white, and it says when it enters the battlefield, create Voja, Friend to Elves, a legendary 3-3 three, three green and white wolf creature token. When a wolf enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life, and that creature fights up to one target creature you don't control. So up to means you don't have to do it, which is good because a 3-3 is big and could get rid of some things potentially, but it also isn't that big. And the last Tulsimir we have is also a new one from Murders at Karlov Manor. It is two, a green and two white. It is an elf scout with lifelink, and it says when it enters the battlefield, create Voja Fenstalker, a legendary 5-5 five, five green and white wolf token with trample. And then it says whenever a wolf you control attacks, if Tulsimir attacked this combat, target creature an opponent controls blocks that wolf this combat if able. So as long as you're swinging a wolf and this Tulsimir, you can choose which creature blocks that wolf. Next we have Universal Autonomation. It is one colorless for a 1-1 one, one changeling. So a one drop that counts for elf and wolf. Next we have Wirewood Channeler. This is three and a green for a two-two elf and it taps to add X mana of any one color to your mana pool where X is the number of elves in play. So similar to Priest of Titania except for it taps for any color that you would like. Finally we have Wood Elves. It is two and a green for a one-one elf. When it enters the battlefield, search your library for a forest card, put that card onto the battlefield and then shuffle. So a way to ramp on an elf body okay that rounds it out for our creatures that was a total of 37 creatures very very creature heavy deck however we want to constantly be replenishing our field and we are probably going to be the target of a lot of removal as voja is so powerful so next up we have sorceries these are good cards in this deck we've got seven and we will start out with cultivate because we're in green and why wouldn't we want to ramp there are a handful of ways as i spoke to in the intro to try to protect voja you could run some protection spells because we're in white um, you could run artifacts that try to keep it safe however in our playtesting the best thing that we found that we really could do is just to try to ramp that way we can just recast voja and still start casting things from our hand so cultivate is the first of a few that do this for us we also have explore which allows us to play an additional land this turn and draw a card we're also running far seek which fetches a plains island swamp or mountain so all three so we can go get whatever we need and then lastly we have three visits and it says search your library for a forest put it onto the battlefield then shuffle your library so cultivate puts a land into play that is untapped three visits puts a land into play that is untapped and then Farsi gets one and it comes in tapped uh, next under sorceries we have a couple of non-ramp spells we have first elvish promenade it is a tribal sorcery and it says put a one one green elf warrior token onto the battlefield for each elf you control so you can cast this double the amount of your elves and then move to combat with Voja and put a load of plus one plus one counters onto all of your creatures. Next, we decided to put in Overrun. It is two green, 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 and it says creatures you control get plus three, plus three, and gain trample until the end of turn. So again, even with Voja out, we do have a way to win this game. Next, lastly, we have Vandal Blast. It is one red, and then you can overload it for five four in a red and it says destroy target artifact you don't control if it was overloaded you pick 
all artifacts you don't control. So if you're playing against a deck that has a lot of artifact synergy, you can blow that up. And since we're in red, it's a nice little insurance policy in our back pockets. Okay, now we're gonna look at the instance in this deck. We've got, firstly, Elven Ambush. It is create a 1-1 green elf warrior creature token for each elf you control. So very similar to the Elvish Promenade, except for we can do this at instant speed. So we could do this on our opponent's end step before we untap for the turn, giving all of those 1-1 elves a chance to hit the battlefield really without summoning sickness. Next, we have Flawless Maneuver for two and a white. If you control your commander, you may cast this spell without paying its commander costs and creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of turn. So some protection for your board state. We also have Gladrahim Ambush. Create X, 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature tokens where X is the number of attacking creatures. Prevent all combat damage that would be dealt this turn by non-elf creatures. So it is sort of a fog and potentially would repopulate you after a board wipe if someone were to reset your board and then come after you swinging everything they have. You can pull this out. It will help rebuild your board state very quickly and also protect you from losing potentially. Next, we have Inspiring Call. This is two and a green, and it says draw a card for each creature you control with a plus one, plus one counter on it. Those creatures gain indestructible until the end of turn. So you can draw a whole bunch of cards, you will have an indestructible board of creatures until the end of turn, and that should also help get you through. Again, we do need multiple forms of protection with Voja, as you will be the perceived threat at the table almost immediately, be just because of Voja. Next, we have Path to Exile and Swords to Plowshares. They are both a single white pip to exile a target creature. One of them lets your opponent go get a land. The other one lets your opponent gain life equal to the power of the creature you removed. And finally, to round out instance, we also have Unbreakable Formation, two and a white, and it says creatures you control gain indestructible until the end of turn. And then if you cast it in your main phase, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on each of those creatures, and they gain Vigilance as well. So good way to play that card is in your main phase as you're swinging out trying to potentially end the game. All right, next up we've got several artifacts. We have seven artifacts. Most of them are mana rocks. However, let's see them. First, we have Arcane Signet. Taps for a color in your commander's color identity. Then we have Felwar Stone. It taps for a color that a land an opponent controls could produce. So hopefully someone will be in all those colors as well. Next we have Mind Stone. It is two colorless. It taps for a single colorless, but then you can pay one, tap it and sacrifice it to draw a card if you're in a pinch and you've got to search for an answer. Then we have Soul Ring. It is a single colorless mana and taps for two. A important artifact in this deck is the Ozolith. It costs one, and it says, when a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on to the Ozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Ozolith has counters on it, you can move them from the Ozolith to a target creature. So a great way to preserve all of those counters that Voja has made and then potentially be able to throw them all back onto one creature. Next we have Thought Vessel. It is a two drop and it has tap at a colorless and gives you no maximum hand size. Again, very quickly you can be drawing many cards per turn and so you don't want to give up those cards if you don't have to. So no max hand size in this deck is great. And lastly, we have Vanquisher's Banner. It is five colorless, and it says when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Whenever you cast a creature spell of the chosen type, draw a card. With this one, I would probably choose elves, as there are more elves in this deck than there are wolves. So you want to be drawing those cards. Next, we have our enchantments in this deck, and we'll start out here. We have seven as well. This first one is a great one. It is Aura Shards. When a creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may destroy a target artifact or enchantment. This is a great way to get rid of some pesky things that are causing you problems, as you'll be casting lots of creatures this whole game, and this way you'll be destroying lots of artifacts or enchantments. Next, we have Branching Evolution. It is two and a green, and it is as cheap as it has ever been at like four bucks right now. If one or more plus one plus one counter would be put on a creature you control. Twice that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead. So huge buff 
for Voja's ability. Next, we have Doubling Season for four and a green. This card is a monster in this deck. If an effect would put one or more tokens onto the battlefield under your control, it puts twice that many of those tokens onto the battlefield instead. If an effect would place one or more counters on a permanent you control, it places twice that many of those counters on that permanent instead. Absolutely insane. We want to make some tokens in this deck, and we definitely want to put counters on things in this deck, so Doubling Season covers both of those for us. Next, we have Growing Rights of Itlamok. It is also as cheap as it has ever been. It is two in a green. Costs about $5, and it says when it enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand, and then you put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. At the beginning of your end step, if you control four more creatures, transform Growing Rites of Itlamok. And when you transform Growing Rites of Itlamok, it turns into a guy's cradle on the back. It will tap for green for each creature you control. So that can also be just absolutely massive in this deck. Next, we have Ranger Class. It is one in a green. When it enters the battlefield, you're going to make a 2-2 wolf creature token. So that's a good rate two for a 2-2. And then you can pay two more into it to level it up. And it says whenever you attack, put a plus one, plus one counter on attacking creature. So it's going to buff your creatures every time they attack. And then lastly, you can pay to level it up to class three. And it says you may look at the top card of your library anytime, and you may cast creature spells from the top of your library. So giving you some card advantage there as well. Very useful. Next, we have Rhythm of the Wild and Rising of the Day. These are both really good cards in this deck. Rhythm of the Wild says non-token creatures you control have Riot, and Riot means they can either enter with a plus one, plus one counter, or they can have Haste. And then Rising of the Day says creatures you control have Haste, legendary creatures you control get plus one. So they both can grant Haste. And then with Rhythm of the Wild, you can choose a plus one, plus one counter instead if it's in your second main and you don't need the haste that turn. Lastly, we have our lands. We went with 34 lands in this deck. Again, with the amount of ramp we have attached to our elves and using our sorceries like Cultivate and Three Visits and then our wood elves, those kinds of things we can ramp in other ways. We also have several artifacts to help us ramp and so 34 lands we found was right at what this needs to be okay guys that is our deck list for our most fun and consistent version of voja i would encourage you to give this a try voja itself is only about a ten dollar card which is fantastic especially for newer players you can just pick up a copy of this you can fill the rest of this deck out with what you have laying around or very budget friendly versions of elves and wolves none of them are super expensive you don't need a lot else to make this deck work so you could potentially go out and then compete with something like an ur dragon or a edgar markov those kinds of other big time big name commanders that everyone loves to build. So I think this card is going to be an elf type staple for a long time in the future. It is so much fun. Go and have a blast with it. Please check us out on our social medias. They are here and here. And we are also on Patreon and Discord. Our Patreon we just overhauled. We do lots of box breaks and we'll do giveaways for our patrons as well. If you want to go ahead and check that out and consider supporting us. If you like this kind of content, we don't ask for a whole lot. Just like and subscribe and check back for more. Thanks again. Have an awesome day. Bye.